You're listening to the Black Minds Matters podcast in association with WCEN. Hey, what's up? My name is Peaks. You are listening to the Black Minds Matters podcast in association with WCEN. I am joined with... Mr. X was good. That's good. It's a beautiful day again outside. Yeah, man. It's wicked. It's been that this for last week now. I know. So it's like, yeah, bless. Very much so. That obviously, sunshine is very good for you as well at this kind of time. But anyway, <laughs> the reason for this podcast, if you're just joining us, is to raise and lift the spirits and have a diversity of young voices that are currently not really having a platform to be heard on. So we want to come together, share your needs, your experiences, what's happening in the community in the wake of this UK lockdown that we're all going through. How are we coping? What's the current situation? And we're also going to be hearing from key members of the community, people who are vloggers, people who are artists, people who are musicians, people students, who are students. everybody's got a voice here and we really value that and we want to bring you that kind of value as well so you can have some of their wisdom that they want to share with you guys as well all right so today our caller is going to be jazz aka haha jimbo (laughs) Um, he's a personal trainer a content creator he has a passion for exercise and is the business owner to Jim Busy, a fitness brand that delivers workout sessions for the community, charity events, and he boasts his own exclusive merchandise line. Please welcome Jazz, aka Haha Jimbo. So, Jazz, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Hello. Hi, how are you today? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. What's good? What's good, Jazz? You all good, yeah? Yeah, I'm sweet, man. I'm good, man. I'm blessed, man. Jeez. Oh, wow. Okay, so there was like three names we had. We had Jazz, we had um, Ha Ha Jimbo, and which, I don't know, which Jim name Busy. do you... Yes, yeah, Jim Busy. <laughs> which name do you prefer to go by? Um, yeah, I go by the name Jazz, but my online presence is um, Ha Ha Jimbo, uh-huh. and my business is Jim Busy. Excellent. So, um, yeah. so I should call you Jazz then. Yeah, yeah, call me Jazz. Yeah. Okay, Jazz, excellent. All right, so basically, um, we just want to get a bit of a background about who you are, what kind of area you're from, where you kind of grew up, and then obviously what kind of took you into the fitness and um, having an online presence. So if you could give all the guys at home just a bit of a brief overview about um, about yourself, and um, yeah, we'd love to hear about your story. Okay, um, I'm a 25-year-old man. I'm from Western Wood. Um, my background is Jamaican and Scottish. Ooh. Um, yeah, I've lived in West Nord all my life. And um, yeah, like my my story behind my online presence and my business, Jim Busy, is that um, so I grew up in like a rough community, rough neighborhood, and a lot of my friends went to jail growing up. And um, luckily, I was blessed not to go down that route, but it was like it kind of it, it woke me up and. Um, I started. I, I went to Jamaica actually. That that what that was like a sense to wake up to kind of not go down that road of that that, that path. But um, when I went to Jamaica in 2000, oh sorry, I was I was overweight as a youth, okay. and um, that led me to the gym. So I was going to gym from about I was 20, 19, 20, and um, how that happened. My cousin was like, I was going on holiday at the time. And my cousin was like, I'm fat and I'm not going to get no girls, etc. So <laughs> like, I'm not. You one of them ones. <laughs> Yeah, that triggered it off, innit? Like, everyone got a little trigger in them, so that triggered it off. And then um, went down the gym routes, like, the gym. I just, I just transformed from being so overweight to, like, proper in shape and stuff like that. Um, I went to school with people like Stormzy and other rappers, Crips and stuff like that. So I was kind of blessed in the sense I had, like, a lot of influential, famous people around me. So I built up a following just being me and just being around them and doing my gym thing. And then um, 2017, I went to Jamaica, and that trip kind of changed my life because I went there, and I realised that like, when I got off the plane and I was in the airport, I was just so confused that like, my homeland looked like this, and like my people were living in such struggle, and I just felt so like blessed, so grateful that obviously it's where my grandparents are from, and I'm from England, so I was just like, you know what, when I get back to England, I want to try and make an impact to people's life to kind of help them think how I think and be confident like me and one day like inshallah I can bring my business across the world and, and impact impact other countries especially Jamaica so I feel like obviously they, they smoke weed a lot and they drink a lot so like, they're not really on the fitness side of things but the fitness um, 
industry, the fitness, the, the, the gym alone just brings so much more value to your life. So I just thought, you know what, I just want to spread this message and, and create better people and just make them get the best out of life through, through fitness. So that's, that's kind of my story. Wow. That's uh, very inspirational and quite emotional. Trust me, trust me. Nice. That's a big fan. Yeah, That's definitely. I mean, wh- yeah, man. so when you went to Jamaica, were you were you actively in the gym or was it you come back that you started the gym? Um, yeah, no, no. So when I went to Jamaica, I was I was already in just When I went to Jamaica, like, even when they saw me out there, they were like, wow, like, you're big. Like, they were all like, 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 like they see someone this big. But I was, I'm not the biggest, but they were just treating me like, oh, like, you're so thick and strong. And, you know what I mean? And another thing is that, a lot of my friends that are in jail and that are still in jail and so forth, I just thought, you know what, if I can create an avenue so when they get out, a platform that I can just go, you know what, bro, like Louder Rose thing, come do your personal training thing. I've got Jim Busy, I have classes for you, et cetera. And that's what the kind of vision I had, you know what I mean? So I can help people around me, help the world and stuff like that. Obviously, this is for Black Minds Matters and you've had your involvement yeah. with Black Minds Matters. So can you tell us about what it, um, how, um, how that kind of partnership came along and what it was that you were doing with the organisation? Okay, yeah. Um, big up Black Minds Matter. Um, every time, I, my, my, uh, Malik is like my uncle to me. Okay. So like, I remember the time I was creating Jim Busy, um, my mum was like, yeah, Malik does this and does that and he can... Um, and he can um, hook me up and get me work and stuff like that. But I know, I know a lot. I know a lot of people. Let me call you back. It's really out here. He's on <laughs> lockdown wherever uh-huh. you are, but there's still all those things going on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, my mum was like, "Yeah, my uncle can, um, Malik can get me work and stuff like that." So. A lot of people say something like that, so I just like, oh, whatever kind of thing, you know. And then Malik did come through and he's like, yeah, I've got some work for you, so. And it's about black people, it's about our people and it's powering our people. So I was like, yeah, I'm all down for it, man. I'm down to do anything to help help the community and stuff like that. So, yeah, we just got it, we just got it popping and I, I just come down there and um, I give sessions for the youth um, that are linked to Black Man's Matter. And, um, yeah, like, it's just, the, the energy of Black Man's Matter is, is, is uplifting itself. So just being around there, like, I was around there for a while, just, just there, like, not getting paid or nothing, just helping out. So, yeah, man, I'm like, I love Black Man's Mind, what it was still. Quick question, yeah, from when you was a youth, yeah, yeah, yeah. how was you at school? How was it? Uh, did, did you... uh, I was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, when it comes to the sense of learning, I was very, like, I was in, like, if, if my behaviour outside the classroom was, well, to be fair, like, I'm, I'm intelligent, so I was, like, in the top, classes of a lot of my a lot of my subjects but what let me down was I was I'm funny in it so I used to disrupt the class and make them laugh and when I got outside into the playground I was just a terror but it was like the teachers loved me because I was smart but I couldn't be around the smart kids too much because I was just disrupting them so I used to just get put down to another like lowest like that kind of interrupted my my, my my education but I still got like my grades and stuff like that but I was just like always getting excluded for fights and stuff like that so there seems yeah. to be like like just your story about in school. That's why I wanted to ask you about that as well. Because especially with entrepreneurial type people, they seem to have that kind of that way in school where they're smart, but it's just almost like the system is not right for them kind of thing. If that makes sense? I think, you know what, to be totally honest with you, I finished school because of my mum, really. Like, I just knew that I could not not finish school. And I knew that like my mum... It would make my mum proud to finish school and get good grades. So I just kind of just stuck it out for that, really. Like, to be honest with you, I can't even remember what school really taught me. I feel like I'm just not, like, like I, don't, I don't know what it is. I feel like the, the streets have taught me more than the school. Same. Same. I get you. I get you. You're more of um, a, a, um, a person who learns by experience rather than books and things like that. Or... Yeah. I, I saw, I saw um, someone, I saw a quote the other day saying that people mistake intelligence for education or something like that. So I'm saying along them lines, like, yeah. just because you went through that, like, because obviously like, I'm I'm very alert in it, so I kind of like, now I'm a big man, I understand how the system works with education, I understand how the health system works, I understand how life works. So I understand that these education systems are put in place by certain people to train us and program us in a certain way. So now I know that, it's like, okay, maybe that's why I was like that, you know what I mean, my, 
But, yeah. Um, people are going to be like, hold on, did he just say that he went to school with Stormzy and Getz? I mean, what was that like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Storm, and you all Stormzy came was... out on top. I mean, can you um, give us a little bit of insight? I mean, what was it like with you guys? <laughs> yeah, so um, Stormzy was there above me. Um, I got another footballer in my year called Swift. I got a footballer in my year called Callum Harrier, um, who's professional. And Crep, Crep and Conan, Crep was in year 11. So when I was in year 7, Crep was in year 11. So all of this was happening in the school. Stormzy was the year above me. So me and Stormzy have been friends from, from 2005. But so it was just, it was just like, it was just my guy, in it? Like, it was just, he was rapping them times as well. So he used to always rap in the playground and stuff like that. So yeah, it was cool, man. It was cool. My gosh, people are like, what school did you go to? I want some of that pudding they were serving in the uh, canteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was called, it was called um, Stanley Tech, and then it moved to um, Harris South Nord. But when it was at Stanley Tech, man, that was like jail, man. Like, it was literally fights every day. Like, it was crazy. Like, it, I don't think if that school ever carried on. If I went five years at that school, then I definitely want to be the person I am today. No. <laughs> so, I mean, like, fast forward now. This worldwide pandemic um the lockdown this crazy thing that's happening now so the question is now how are you dealing with it how have you been able to continue your business and what are yeah. what is it that you're doing to to adjust um of course like, to be totally honest with you the whole my business is busy like my classes and everything i was doing before has actually slowed down but the reason why it slowed down is because basically ha ha jim but that's my name online I put all my energy into Ha Ha Gym, whereas before I was putting all my energy into Gym Busy. So I was trying to grow Gym Busy and just, gym, obviously, I'm still doing the PT stuff and I'm still, Gym Busy is always going to be my baby and I want to always grow it. But I thought, if I can get a few more followers and do my thing and, and still impact people's life in a positive way by sending out like, messages and do funny content, and that's what I love to do. Like, that's actually my passion. Like, like, that's what I strive for is to do content and just be, that like, make people laugh and stuff like that. So I just thought, let me just do something, do this and create, like, obviously I'm on 16.5K or something like now. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking, if I had 50,000 followers, then if I was to do something with Jim Busy, it would be, like, a big more outreach. So I thought, let me just kind of focus on that and, and grow it. But with this whole COVID-19 thing, like, I've got a job. I work in um, Brixton F45. It's a PT, like it's a gym, circuit gym. And that I just started to like, kick off from there. So that's literally no money from there slowed down. And um, like, if the PT just slowed down. I obviously can't get active right now. But with me, um, I kind of took, I think I've taken a, a longer time to adapt to the situation because when COVID-19 came, I'm having a little one. So I was just like so passionate about what's happening. I was just like doing my research and kind of like the gangster in me came out online and I was just like, I'm having it like, what is this like? Kind of just asking so much questions about like how, why? Because a lot of people just hear stuff on the news and be like, yeah, they said it, so it's true. But with me, it's like, I don't do that. Like, I don't listen to, I listen to myself. I don't listen to the man because he's in a suit or anything like that. So I've been doing my research and just, just kind of just questioning the whole thing. But now it's like, at first I was on an angry thing, and now it's like, okay, it's going to happen. Let me just adapt. So I'm, gonna, I'm creating a live show, which will be um, popping off tonight at 9 o'clock. It'll be called Vibes Can't Done. And what I'll be doing on my Instagram, I'll just be like talking to my um, famous influential friends, just asking them like random funny questions and finding out like kind of how they're coping with the whole quarantine thing. But like, I could have done this long time ago, but where I was just so passionate in kind of research and my head was kind of in this whole COVID-19 rather than kind of like thinking about how I can um, what's the word how I can like monetize off it congratulations by the way yeah, on your little one coming <laughs> and um, so yeah so obviously you've just said basically that you've kind of like um, rearranged your your direction now where you're more concentrating on the the content and the the, the comical side so that's how you was literally your your childhood um, kind of personality <laughs> yeah. is and, and and talent now is coming out in what you're doing now. How how is that? How do you find that? Basically, do you find that you've having to work hard for it to grow, or do you find that it's it's become more of a natural thing for you to do? I think, I think like when it comes to media and being in front of the camera, I think I'm I've got it naturally. I think that's just one of my gifts that that I think I kind of knew it always had for me when I was a young, like, younger, I always used to have the camera. They used to call me CCTV back in the day. Like, <laughs> I, used just, I used to just literally, before even Instagram, I used to always do filming stuff. 
But um, yeah, I think like it's hard work because you have people don't understand that you have to create ideas. It's not just something like, like you don't just wake up every day and it's like, okay, I'm gonna do this on you. You have to kind of think about it and you have to create it in a, in a creative way that maybe someone hasn't done it before, or do you know what I mean? Or how you're gonna um, film it and how you're gonna edit it. Like it's, it's a lot of like there's a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't see that go into the work. But I feel like with me, it's just like um, for years, like my name's Taha Jimbo because I've been like created that name because I thought my name was Jimbo, and it's like right, everyone just it's gonna it's gonna go ha ha when they see me, so I just thought ha ha Jimbo. But I literally for years I've been kind of like making people laugh and that. So when I'm doing it kind of more professionally now. People are just kind of rocking me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm going to be picking up some of those dance moves that you got online. Where did you get that from? <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. um, I, I don't even know. You know like, when I was younger, I, I used to always watch Michael Jackson, like, um, just <laughs> yeah, dance, didn't it? But, and I used to go, um, I used to go to Jackson, like, my t- like, from when I hit about eight years, I used to go raving a lot. Like, literally, like, fly away, go to all these party islands, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I used, always used to listen to house music and, Always skank, always skank, and I always used to be the best dancer in the house. You used so, to like, be. Every time I <laughs> yeah, I don't go. I hang my boots, so I feel it. I don't party no more like that. <laughs> you tired? So, yeah, I'm tired, and I'm tired. So like when I used to go out, people used to be like, "There's that guy I was talking about," or something like that. So I kind of got in my head. I just, I, I believe. I, I, I know I'm not technically the best dancer in the world, but I actually believe that I'm the best dancer in the world. And that's it. That's all we need is that belief. It shines <laughs> through in those dance moves. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. So quick question, oh, yeah. yeah. So um. So we're all on this lockdown thing now yeah. and stuff. And um, I, I know a lot of people um, have kind of changed the way they they eat now and stuff like that. I'm seeing as you're yeah. obviously a man that was on that gym thing and stuff like that. Have you changed yeah. the way you eat? Have you learned any any more about um, health and stuff like that since you've been in lockdown? If you have, what, what has them been them things that um, you've learned? To be totally honest with you, so I don't eat that. I eat fish. So I'm, just, I'm a pescatarian, so I don't eat. I don't eat meat, yeah. So, like, this has been from 2017. Like, after I got back from Jamaica, I kind of cut that out as well. I just changed my whole diet, life, everything. I just got kind of woke. But it was like, I feel like since this has come, this is a this like virus. Obviously, the virus it's called a virus, but to me, I call it an immune attack. So it's an attack on us, yeah. And to defend yourself from an attack, you have to keep your immune system strong. And how you keep your immune system strong is just by feeding yourself like vitamin minerals. And I've been I've, these are things that I've been doing. These are that I do know. But since it has come about, and my girl's pregnant, we've been kind of doubling up on it. So taking sea moss and moringa mm, tea and moss, ginger. Yes, um, yeah, um, keeping it together on that ASAP because that's like ninety-two minerals, um, vital minerals in that alone. And um, yeah, so we just have a lot of warm drinks, like a lot of warm drinks these days, like ginger, lime, um, lemon, garlic, honey, you just mix it up and just, yeah, just try to eat to the best of our ability. But I, I'm not going to lie to you, I still eat my snacks here and there, but like I'm I'm running a lot um, and keeping that. And that's what I'm saying, exercise is all, boosts your immune system, man. This is, it's, it's attack on the immune system right now. And so to be fair, only the strong will survive. Definitely. I mean, in regards to males and females, do you feel that um, from your experience and you even gone through weight loss and all these kind of things now and you're obviously you, you've mentioned your girl's pregnant and um, obviously oh. you work with people as well in the gym. Is there a different approach when it comes to males and females or, you know, what, what, how should people get started on the nutrition? Um, I think the best thing to do for anybody, I don't, I don't think there's much difference in males and females. Um, Obviously, some people might be allergic to certain things or some people can't take certain things. I don't know exactly. Everyone's different, but I think the best... My, my advice would be for anybody out there that's trying to um, build their immune system and get it stronger or anything like that, is just do research. Like, literally, like, I'm not I, I could, I'm not the best person to ask, to ask about nutrition, but I just know, like, if, I, if someone says something to me, CMOS, then I'm going to go and Google it or YouTube it and find out what it is what can I do to boost my immune system? And these these questions that like, you should be asking the internet and all the answers are at our fingertips. So I just feel like people need to just do a bit more research, man, and just stop listening to people and like, listen to yourself. Yeah, that's some good advice. Of course, of course.
on your um, on your social media as well, you you share a lot of quotes and inspirational things that you put up there to encourage people. Um, where does that kind of come from? So that kind of comes from just like basically when I first um, done Jim Busy and changed my whole life around from being like on the road and just doing my little thing or whatever. I just like I was making money, so when I stopped making money and I come to Jim Busy and I sacrifice everything just to put everything so like positively like it had an effect on my mental state because it was like I had to adapt from such a um such a lifestyle to another lifestyle and it was it was a big hit and I was about 23 years old so it was like and I just moved out of my girl so all of these things were happening we just she just we just got a mortgage together we just furnished the yard and all these things and it's like now I got to pay for a mortgage I just was living at my grand's for free and stuff like that so that kind of took a uh, um, a big toll on my mental health. And I just remember when I was going through that stage, like, I wasn't me, but I remember always seeing things online that would help me and, and, and boost me and just keep me going and stuff like that. So I thought, but when I did get, when I did overcome that stage, because that, like, not, um, tough times are last thing that tough people do. So mm. if you do go through a tough stage, you will get through that at the end. You just got to keep going. But, I just feel like when I was at that stage, like a few people, like I remember when my brethren hit me up on just like UK, bro, like just checking in on you and little things like that. I just thought, you know what? Like when I when I did get back and I was me again and I was uplifted again, I was like, no nah, man, I can't forget about my people that was where I was. You know what I mean? So that's why I just put these messages up, um, five tips and help people and just yeah, man, just try to help people as much as possible, bro. That's good, man. I'm gonna ask you a question, yeah. I'm gonna hit you with this. Um, what's the most powerful spiritual experience of your life that you've had? Um, I forgot the name of the night, but it's a special night in Ramadan. I think it's a 27th night of Ramadan where you um, go to the mosque and you pray all night. Like there, uh, I forgot. I actually forgot the name of it. I'm a bit of violence right now. But um, yeah, that one time I was in the mosque and um, was praying all night long. And yeah, like just hearing brothers cry while they're praying and stuff like that. And it was just like, it was just so like fulfilling and touching. It was just when I got out of that mosque, I was just like, "Whoa!" I felt like a whole new person, and like, I think that was probably one of the most high, like the highlights of my of my um, of the question you just asked me. Still, do you think that shapes the way that m- most people are in regards to what you do in life? One hundred percent, because like I I converted to, Muslim, um, to Islam in two thousand and twelve. And by that, around that time there, I had like three cases pending. Like I was on proper badness. I was 18 them times, and um, yeah, I had that, like literally from from like like to me, I'm a, I'm a good guy. I've never been like a an evil person, but from like the age of I don't know, from like a little young teenager and growing up, I was just always like, I was I was very polite and had manners and that, but I was just kind of like unruly. Same, same. And like no one couldn't really tell me nothing. Obviously, I listened to my mum, but I was still bad. Like, and then when um, I converted, it was like a whole new life. I was like, I was respecting like people more, and I had more value to me. Like it was just it was just like a new life. Like before, I would just diss people and just be so like unruly. But when 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 I converted, I was like, oh, no, I shouldn't treat people like that. I should do this. I should pray and I should stuff like that. Another important thing as well, based on what I what I um, see on your social media, young people are not known for keeping track of global news, as you know. They kind of like, everyone's doing their thing and blah, 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 and they kind of ignore what the news is saying. But because of this now, do you think that's now changed now? Young people are now more aware of global news and news to what's going on now. With regard to your question, do you mean like, mainstream media or do you mean like social media sharing stuff and knowledge about what's going on mainstream media and alternative a uh, mainstream okay. news and alternative news as well um yeah i feel like because like you know what it is there yeah? the, the the normal life of like the rat race the, this dunya has slowed down dramatically we're on pause so a lot of people have more time on their hands to kind of listen and research stuff and remember their life stopped so like why is their life stopped? So they're probably just doing a little bit of research and stuff like that. So it's probably normal, isn't it, for them to share it at this point in time because it's affecting them, whereas before, the media ain't affecting them. They're just doing their thing and living their life. They're poor, so there's no reason to watch the news or do you course, know what I mean? Of course, of course. 
you obviously talked about your experience with nutrition, your spiritual experiences, the fact that you, you and your girl um, are getting ready to have a baby, you've got a, a mortgage and all these types of things. And you went through a bit of uh, mental health um, issues there. Um, there may be people obviously listening now who are in similar situations, especially due to what's going on right now. What kind of yeah. um, top three suggestions do you have for people to manage those kind of emotions and stuff and um, keep them inspired and keep them kind of motivated? What, what would your advice be to somebody who's kind of in that situation that you are in to say, okay, here's how you can deal with it and here's what can I help me get through? What's your kind of baby, top three um, suggestions? Um, top three suggestions, uh, exercise. Um, that's crucial because I feel like when you're going through a tough time, you have to find um, positive escapes from your tough time that can benefit you when you get back to your life. Because basically, it's like exercise. When you're exercising, you're 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 escaping the the, the trauma of of like your mental health issues, and you're focusing on you and your breathing and developing and whatever. So I think exercise is definitely one. Reading, um, I'm just yeah, reading something positive like reading right now that can help you with your situation right now. And I think it'll be the next one. So, and, and following the correct people online because a lot of people, are, uh, majority of people are online, and they could be following the wrong person, they could be following, I don't know, not even the wrong person, they could be following someone who's nearer, like, closer to their success. And you can just be watching them, seeing them doing their thing, and you just be like, oh, man. <laughs> They're just uh, and rushing your stuff. Or you could be what, uh, following someone else who's just promoting something that's just not what you need to see right now and just distracting you and just not keeping you on task. So following the right people, reading books and exercise, I think, would be the top three for right now, for the, for the generation right now. Before and after, has your outlook on life changed in any way? Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't really trust the government, and I don't trust everything they say to us. So I've always kind of been in that, but right now, like, it's at like, like the peak where it's like a proper dope. And it's just this whole thing, I just, uh, it's, it's, I don't know where the world's going to go to because they're talking about this cash society and, with all these things I'm researching online about this one world order, all these things that they that 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 the world's going towards that way. Even these vaccines, I don't know what's in the vaccines. I'm having a kid. They, they're going to try give me my kid a vaccine when he when he comes and stuff like that. So it's just that like, I'm just right now. I'm just in a space that keeps my frequency high and just that like, I'm not really putting too much energy into the future because I don't really know exactly what's going to happen. So I don't want to look too far. I'm just trying to be as present as possible and just keep my bubble um, just happy as possible and just like not really focus on that because when I do look forward, it kind of it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't put me in a state of fear, but it does worry me a bit. I won't lie to you, but I don't want to be like thinking, oh, what's going to happen? How's life going to be? And kind of put myself in like a worried uh, state of fear. I just I just I just keep myself cool in a nice bubble and in a nice space right now, just doing a lot of research and just yeah, I just hope the best. I just hope we can go back to normal, man. Yeah, well, the, the, your videos basically are going to keep people up and high vibrations yeah. anyway and stuff, which is, <laughs> which is which is good, you know what I'm saying and stuff. So I think just trying to be, as I, I agree completely with what you say, just trying to keep a bit of normality going so we can stay, yeah. you know what I mean, stay as, as calm as and sane as possible and stuff. But thank you very much, yeah. sir, for, for this interview. No, 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 I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, I, I like talking a lot, you know. I could be talking all day. But yeah, no, I <laughs> well, that's good. So well, much. and uh, because you're a content creator and you've got all your businesses and all that kind of stuff, where, where can people come and see this content? Can you give us some um, how um, people can find you online? Yeah, your social media. Yeah. So my social media platform is Ha Ha Jimbo, and that is on every social media platform um, you can find me on. And yeah, man, I'm on YouTube now. Um, I haven't posted for a while because of this stuff, but yeah, man, just catch me on YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Um, I'm everywhere, just doing my thing. So just look out for me. Soon be on the television as well. Are you on TV, yeah? No, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. That's, that's a goal. 
obviously got rescheduled and stuff but thanks for your support with it no worries all man. the best safe deliveries and all you the best with the fall review and your oh, beautiful girl you. by the way <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you so that's much that's an inspiration man. right there yeah thank you very oh, much thank bro thank you so much man thank right. you lot, man. Take care, right, man. have a good day bro love and respect yeah yeah bro. Right, man. bless bro all right. All right, love so that was Jazz. Yeah, if you want to go and check him out, there's lots to say. There's lots that he's sharing on his social media. So all the links will be in the information box below. If you've got any feedback, tips or experiences, then please leave us a comment. You can email us or drop his comments below, as I said, or um, email us on info at blackmindsmatters.co.uk. If you want to check out more on Black Minds Matters, the activities, videos, everything else that you can sign up to the newsletter on, on www.blackmindsmatters.co.uk. If you want to find out the latest government and healthcare guidelines, the most up-to-date resources will be on www.gov.uk or you can go and visit www.wandsworth.gov.uk. If you found this podcast helpful, you want to share it with somebody else, then please do subscribe and spread the word. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Be safe and be blessed. Take care of yourselves. You're listening to the Black Minds Matters podcast in association with WCEN.